Hello, everybody. I'm Mordecai Lacrosse, and it's time for another Strange People in History. That's right. Let's start the show. Hey, everyone. I'm your host, Kai, and it's time for another Strange People in History. And I haven't done one of these videos for a while, and that's because I've been trying to get more stringent. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but trying to get more strict on who is a strange person in history, you know, because I don't want just the ordinary. I want the really out there strange and weird for the series Strange People in History. So that's why it has been a while before I've actually had another Strange People in History video, and that's why it's only now you're getting another Strange Person in History video. And for the, for this part of the video of the strange people in history is none other than Mary Shelley. I hope to have some more uh, strange people in history uh, people in this video, but if I'm not able to, then Mary Shelley might be the only one. It just depends on how long it takes me for the particular strange parts of her life for this video. So one of the things of why Mary Shelley is in this strange people in history video is for a particular reason the fact that she kept her husband's calcified heart. So yes, the author of the popular novel Frankenstein kept her husband's calcified heart. You heard me, right? Now I know I put that heart in this drawer somewhere. You better really so yeah, she kept her husband's calcified heart after he had died. Now, yes, it's strange, but I think it's actually pretty cool. And it shows how much she cared about him. And in my opinion, strange is actually a good thing, not a bad thing. It's not like a curse or something to be avoided. At least not in this particular instance, if you will. So yeah, she kept her husband's calcified heart on her and whatnot. I mean, that is not only cool and strange, but that is goth as fuck. Like, I don't know how you can get more goth than that. I mean, really, she should not be just known as the mother and goddess of sci-fi, because without her, there would not be modern sci-fi as we know it. But she also should be known as the mother of classic modern horror and the mother of modern goth. Like, how can you get more goth than that? And you're like, I don't know, Kai. Yeah, like, you could probably get more goth. Okay, so you're like, oh, you, you can be more goth than that. Well, how's this for being goth as fuck? She lost her virginity on her mother's grave. Yeah, you heard that, right? She literally bone check a llama on her mother's grave. I guess she wanted to make sure her mother approved of the guy that she was with. So is there, like, a particular reason, girl, that you brought me out to this graveyard? Well, kind of. My mother's graveyard's here, you know, her grave's here, and I wanted to, you know, on her grave. You, you want to yeah. what? Make love, make whoopee right here, you know, on her grave. Okay, I mean, with you. I guess we can. Never done anything like that. Ash Mandela. Now, the reason she's in this strange people in history video that you're watching is because she's known as the person that holds the record in the Guinness Book of Records for longest locks in the world. Now, of course, the article that I was reading called it dreadlocks, but I don't appreciate that term or like it because I've been told by people that actually have the locks that that is not a correct term and is actually recently inherently racist in nature to call them dreadlocks because the term was used in history because of black people having locks that racist white people would use it in order to insult their hair by saying, oh, that hair is dreadful. So the correct term is not dreadlocks. In that article, they should probably check into that and not have that. But that's beside the point. But the point being is this woman has the longest locks in the world of the Guinness Book of World Records. She is the record holder for the longest locks in the world. In fact, here's a photo of her. Now, this particular freeze frame is, as you can tell, taken from an episode of the hit show The View, where the ladies of The View were discussing with Ash of her long locked hair. And that's what this freeze frame is from, is she was discussing how she was the World Guinness Book of Record holder for her longest locks in the world. And as you can see in the background, there is a photo, if you will, there's two photos, and one is where she's standing on the ladder and showing how long the locks are in the lock from where she stand at the ladder go all the way down and still there's a lot more hair as you can see it's really cool that is an awesome accomplishment if you ask me could you imagine yourself living in an airport terminal well that's what this next strange person in history actually did 
guest here is Mehran Karimi Nasiri, and I apologize if I mispronounced his name. He's an Iranian refugee who lived in the departure lounge of Terminal 1 in Charles de Gaulle Airport from August 26, 1988 to July 2006 when he was hospitalized. So this particular man, the reason he stayed in the airport for so long is he was originally an Iranian citizen, and he was expelled from Iran during the protest against the particular leader and whatnot. So he was a refugee and he left his homeland and basically they want to allow him into France or anywhere. So he was at this airport for over all those years because no place would take him. And basically the lawyer that his lawyer was like, yeah, you can't expel him from the airport. And so he stayed there at the airport. So this guy went to a law, like he fought for like 18 years to be considered a citizen of anywhere but Iran. And at one point was arrested on the grounds that he was there illegally uh, when he went to Britain and then was sent back to France, where he was then again arrested for saying that his documents were falsified until the French authorities actually proved that no documents were falsified. And for the rest of those 18 years, he spent his life at that airport. And basically, people got to know him while he was there. And I mean, even though he didn't talk much, it was just like a natural thing. They're like, oh, hey, yeah. There he is. How you doing today? And stuff like that. I mean, I just think it's crazy that he had to spend 18 years at an airport. Like, that is just really bad on France government's part and the UK's, you know, government part. They, they should be ashamed of themselves for what they did to that man. I'm just saying. Have you ever thought to yourself, hey, I want to be the Pope? Because I, I sure have never thought that. But this particular next strange person in history actually thought, hey, I'm the Pope and became the Pope. Kind of, not really, like not actually by the Catholic Church, but by him and few other people. So this is the guy. This guy claims that he is Pope. He was known as Pope Michael by his uh, followers, if you will. His name is David Allen Baden, and he died in 2022, which was this year in August. He stated in 2009 that he had approximately 30 solid followers, and in 2022 interview, he said that he expanded over to 100 with a diocese. In the Philippines, he was he elected himself Pope by himself, a group of six lay people, which included his parents. He had came to believe that the Catholic Church had apostatized from the Catholic faith since Vatican II, and that there had been no legitimate Pope since the death of Pope Pius the Seventh in 1958. So he claims that he was the Pope, sent you know the only Pope. Because we're the real Pope. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. All the other popes are just imitating. So what the real pope? Please stand up. What? What? Seriously, the the fact that this guy thought he was the pope and whatnot. When when I'm pretty sure that's not how Catholicism works. I mean, I might myself am not Catholic, but you know, my grandmother for many years was, and no, for a fact, that's not how it works. But you know, whatever. I guess right. So the reason this guy claimed to be Pope in the first place is apparently him and his family had an issue with what a thing called Vatican II, which was a council of Catholics hierarchy that sat down and they said to themselves, OK, certain things that we do as a church should be presented in a different light or a different manner because we're not making it to where people can understand what we're saying and we're coming across kind of not the way we want to be presented. And they realized that certain doctrines that they had done in the past weren't really Christian or Catholic, but were more secular and influential by politics and had nothing to do with the cheap teachings of Christ. So they had decided to change the church up a little bit to be more presentable to a secular, ever-changing world and to do away with certain traditions and things that just weren't really actual religious things that were political and they decided to do away with it of course in my opinion the catholic church still has a lot of work to do on that but the fact is that they were thinking hey we need to do things better in order to present our message is a step in the right direction right well apparently pope michael as he called himself and his parents and his family and the six people that decided he was going to be pope for this new thing decided that no that was too bad that they need to continue being bigoted and so that's why this guy is like oh yeah i'm the pope no you're not now you're just some dead guy and kind of screwed if the catholics are right i mean i don't think the catholics are right but if the catholics are right i'm pretty sure you're burning in hell just saying 
So that's it for this video today of strange people in history. Um, tune in next week for whatever video we have planned. I'm not sure at the time of recording this of what next week's video is. But by the time this video actually goes up, I'll already have it done. Anyways, that's beside the point. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more strange people in history videos or just strange but true videos or strange true photos, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of future strange people in history videos, strange but true videos strange true videos or even my paranormal videos just hit that subscribe button that notification bell and you'll be notified of such future content comment down below of what you thought of any of these particular strange people in history i'd love to hear your feedback anyways that's all we have time for today thank you for watching i've been your host kai until next time peace out and stay strange i would like to begin with a poem in old-fashioned meter be good to us and we'll be good to you mm -hmm.